All righty. Um, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this year's Virtual Zeek Week. So I'm right jumping into the talk. Uh, I'll be talking about the weird, and this 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 is the second talk I'm doing on the weird um, notices that we have. And right before jumping into the talk, uh, my name is Parma. I'm a security engineer. I recently joined ESnet eight months ago, and I'm a security engineer in ESnet. Okay, so weird history. Uh, it all started with the analysis of weird.log file. Uh, that is one of the log files that Zeek generates apart from all the other um, cool conventional protocol log files that it, it generates out of your traffic. And um, what is in, in that file? So what, what Zeek sees in your traffic and what Zeek, Zeek thinks that is weird going on in your tra traffic, it tries to log it into a separate log file called weird.log file. So for Zeek, any unusual or exceptional uh, activity that is going on right now in your network that could indicate any malformed packets or any malform, malformed connection, then, the, then there will be some weirds that will be triggered based on some of the um, conditions that Zeek checks for in your traffic. And all those things will get logged into the weird.log file. So um, any, unconven any unconventional uh, activity, rather uh, either TCP IP protocol or any malicious activity or any kind of thread that is going on in your network, you should try to catch that, uh, or you should try to look into the weird.log at least, because if it's not going to tell you if there is any kind of attack or malicious activity going on, it will actually reveal uh, any kind of misconfigurations that are happening on your network or any kind of misconfigurations that you have that you can get rid of by um, looking at weird.log file. So why does it matter? Uh, I have always seen that weird.log is one of the pretty uh, overwhelmed file that Zeek generates. Like I have seen uh, 21 million, 28 million weirds per day logged into the weird.log file. So it, it becomes pretty heavy and it is worthwhile checking that why exactly those weirds are getting popped and triggered in your network. So uh, as I said before, that if you can find the condition, if you can find that weird that why exactly it's triggering in your network, it can either reveal whether that weird is a true positive or it's a false positive. If it's a true positive, great. You can then investigate and analyze that what is it that is making that weird trigger. If it's false positive, there is a way to whitelist that from logging into the weird.log file. I'm not going to go into the detail on um, how you can whitelist that because it was in my um, previous very detailed talk on weird. But this is how like it's worth taking a look into the weird.log and finding out whether some uh, some activities true positive or false positive whitelisting or at least cleaning up the clutter that is going on in the weird.log file. So before jumping into the weirds that we see at ESnet, I want to just give you a brief background of what the network architecture looks like because that is uh, you, that is useful because if you have it in your background, then whatever I'm going to explain next, it will make more sense. So uh, this is the network architecture for the uh, West Coast data center at ESnet. So the cluster that we have there actually uh, sees all the traffic. So in the, in the diagram, you can see that we have two 10 gig links that connects our uh, data center router, which is ESnet West router to the internet, uh, to the two core routers that we have, one, it at, one, at, Sacram one, it, one at Sacramento and one at um, Sunny uh, and, at, and, and uh, in Sun. So um, the two links that are up, uh, the 10 gig links, uh, we actually tap them after it hits the uh, router, like it, it, between our distribution switch and the router. So we are getting the east-west traffic as well as north-south traffic. Um, the two taps specifically are on the 10 gig links, that is one behind the firewall and, the, and on the one link that is bypassed. Uh, we aggregate all the traffic using Arista. So you need a load balancing device, especially a network load balancing device to uh, load balance all the um, traffic to the idea systems that you have. So in this case, we use Arista as a network load balancer. It load balances the traffic between our Zeek nodes. We have three physical systems that, um, that makes up our Zeek cluster at West Coast. Two of them are the physical boxes that ex exclusively run worker. And then one is our manager that runs manager, logger, and proxy. So that's like a pretty uh, brief um, high, high view of what our um, West Coast data center looks like in terms of how we are monitoring the traffic. All right, so most uh, triggered weirds in uh, our weird.log file. Uh, so this, um, the green line shows an, an entry in the weird.log file so that you can get a feel of what exactly is in the weird.log file. So that's the entry that, that is telling us that there is a connection with that, that UID and the source IP, source port, destination IP, destination port, and the seventh column is the weird type that Zeek logs. Uh, in, in this case, it is saying possible split routing, and then the worker node that um, triggered that. 
So as, an, as we analyzed the uh, past 24 hours worth of traffic, we had three uh, most triggered beards. As you can see on the screen, they are um, the blue um, highlighted text. So inappropriate pin, data before established, and possible split routing were the three most triggered beards in our um, network. And we wanted, to, we wanted to investigate why is that the case. Um, so jumping in, inappropriate fin is the weird type that actually uh, has its condition defined in tcb.cc. So if you guys have Zeek in your production cluster built out of the source, then you should have the source flying around on your network, uh, on your host. So uh, if you want to just out of case see the condition that is triggering that weird, you can absolutely go into the source analyzer protocol tcp slash tcp.cc. That's the code in which the condition is written that actually triggers that uh, inappropriate pin we had to get logged in via .log file. So the crux of uh, that condition is um, when Zeek sees a packet during a, uh, during a connection that has pin bit, a pin bit uh, flag set, uh, which, is, which is not supposed to happen, like uh, as per the standards of TCP IP, uh, TCP IP normal establishment of the connection and teardown of the connection. So whenever Zeek sees that kind of randomness in the traffic that all of a sudden a packet with thin, thin bit is sent, but it's not uh, complying with the conventional method of um, pro uh, conventional method of connection establishment, it raises that um, it raises that weird and it logs it into the weird.log file. So seen in the traffic, um, I do that because sometimes some, some statistical analysis of what the weird.log, um, what different types of uh, distribution of weird types is can give you a really good background that is the problem is uh, contained in a physical host or a, a, a one particular system or it is all over the place. So some previously, like I have seen uh, some very specific host exhi exhibiting those kind of weirds, but in this case, it was all around the place. Like it, what we were seeing the notices of inappropriate pin for almost all the, I, I would not say all the IPs, but almost majority of the IPs that were reported in the weird.log. So we couldn't pinpoint that if there's any issue with a specific host configuration or if there is any issue with a specific server configuration. So that's why I'm showing the statistical analysis. Sometimes it helps a lot if you just do statistical, statistical analysis of uh, your data and produce a histogram of if there is something uh, related to specific host that is going on. Uh, the second one was data before established. Again, the same uh, weird, uh, the, this weird type is defined in the same file, uh, tcp.cc. The reason, the reason I would like to go and check the code is to make sure whether the triggered alert is a true positive or a false positive. As I said before, that if you know the condition that is triggering that weird, and if you can corroborate that condition with the traffic that you are seeing, you can then deduce and come to the conclusion that, oh, it's a false positive and I can safely ignore it, or, oh, it's a true positive, uh, my traffic is looking weird and I can do something about it, or there is some kind of misconfiguration going on in my traffic. So that's why it's a good idea to go and see the source code to see what exactly is the condition defined. So that's why I have defined that if you want to, uh, if you are uh, feeling more uh, curious, you can just go into the tcp.cc and see the condition. So the cause is, uh, long story short, um, as the name suggests, that before the Zeek is seeing some kind of data packets before the uh, proper establishment of the TCP connection, which is like Cincinnati Ag. And if Zeek sees that uh, middle stream traffic, it raises this kind of uh, weird in the weird.log file. Again, seen in the traffic, it was all over the place. We couldn't pinpoint that what exact, what specific destination host or a server or a system is exhibiting that kind of behavior, or if there are any specific system for which the um, uh, weird is getting logged. So uh, all over the place. The third one is the possible split routing that we were seeing a lot of notices for. Again, defined in tcp.cc, you can go ahead and check the condition if you want to. Um, the cause uh, for possible split routing to get logged into, into the weird.log file is, uh, as the name suggests, sometimes some of the workers see just one half of the connection and is like completely missing the second half of the connection. For example, the TCP establishes as SIN, SINAC, AC, and then some data transfers happens between source and destination, and then a proper tear down of the connection with the FIN bit sent and the FIN AC is sent and reset is set. So if, if Zeek is not able to see one side of the connection, it raises the notice saying that something is going on, some kind of filtering is happening on your network or there is actually split routing. The problem is, as I said before, that we are monitoring the uh, traffic that is not split, like we are monitoring the complete traffic going uh, inbound and outbound of our data center and east-west. So we are not expecting to see like seven or eight million uh, uh, events of uh, possible split routing in our weird.log. 
And again, uh, seen in the traffic, it was all over the place. All the IPs were kind of like exhibiting um, that kind of behavior. Cause of those weirds. Um, so this diagram shows like some um, the the screenshot that I uh, I showed before. It's just one clip of that. The cause was Arista. Uh, no, Arista was not able to load balance our traffic uh, correctly to our Zeek workers, and that was causing uh, some workers getting one part of the connection and some other workers getting other part of the connection, and they were logging that hey, this is a split connection. So how did we find that issue? So um, this is. Uh, this is when we started. So we couldn't pinpoint that what is the cause. Like, is there any specific host or is there any, is there any specific system? So we started looking more into the connections. And what we did was we collected the four tuple of connection. So the first four columns, source IP, source port, destination IP, destination port, we collected all the connections recorded for that four tuple in last 15 minutes. And then we saw that what is going on. And the cool part is on the right side, you see that red box uh, and it says the history. And you can actually say, see that one part of the connection, um, if you're familiar, a little bit familiar with how history is recorded in Zeek, you would know right away that the caps, uh, the capitalization of the connection uh, variables like SADF, that's, that says that the, the connection was from origin. And then this, uh, the small ones are saying that the connection uh, or the lower case is saying the connection was from the response. So you can see that, um, one part of the connection is going to one physical box, which is the node name, which says that bro best two and the worker uh, thread that is running on the, on the box. On each box, we run at least 10 worker threads. So um, that can that, that is the, the second half of the node, uh, node name. This says the worker thread and the first half of the node name says which host is going to. So it was clearly um, identifiable from here that one part of the connection is going to one physical box, the second half of the connection is going to the second physical box. box. And we were correlating those connection uh, logs with our beard logs. So it was very consistent that for all these kind of different connections, the connections were getting split to two different physical boxes. And for, for those connections, all the three uh, most triggered weirds were getting triggered, like the data before established, inappropriate pin, and possible thread routing. So from this, we made clear, uh, it made clear that, oh, we are actually seeing the traffic, but it is getting split into the different uh, worker hosts. This is a little better view for um, the previous slide that shows the two different kind of history of the connections. Um, SYN, SYNAC, AC, data, data, AC, FIN, FIN. So exact one part of the connection going to one worker, the second part of the connection going to the second worker for that four tuple in last 15 minutes period of time. Okay, so resolving those weird. So now we pinpointed that okay, our uh, our load balance, our network load balancer is causing the connections to get split between our uh, worker nodes. So we contacted the Arista support, and they suggested that uh, we had a setting of ingress load balance pro uh, profile symmetric. That's the symmetric profile that we were applying to our ingress um, ports from which we were collecting the traffic. So that that profile was actually getting applied to. Uh, to the setting called egress to interfaces. And they recommended that you have to change that from egress to interfaces to the ingress tap interfaces. So when we changed that setting, uh, we were able to get rid of the symmetry problem. So this is pretty um, detailed slide. I have put a lot of theory for mentioning that what exactly was the issue and what was the resolution that was recommended. But long story short, there was just one switch of um, symmetric profile that we had to do between the ports. I mean, from the egress to interfaces to the ingress tap and tap port, so that symmetric traffic gets routed, so that the symmetric traffic for corresponding each flow gets routed to the same box um, by Arista. Okay, so the result was um, after that change was applied right away, uh, we got tremendous um, uh, amount of weird getting uh, filtered from our weird.log file. So this was the result right after we applied the change. And again, the seventh column is the weird type. And you can see that all those three different weirds, like the data before established, possible speed routing, which you were getting in millions, kind of like just shrunk to a couple of thousands in 24 hours period of time. Uh, results continued. Again, uh, this is the count of weird notices for a day that we were getting before we applied the change, which was like almost 27 million. And then after applying the change, we were only getting like almost 100,000 weirds. Uh, and it was kind of like 95% 95, 95 reduction in weirds uh, in our weird.log file. Key takeaways, um, I wanted to focus more on the field that was really helpful in detecting that uh, 
issue in our connections and it's called node underscore name. So you should not underst underestimate the value of that field. And it will not only tell you where the problem relies, uh, where, the, where the problem lies, but also can tell you that what is the cause of the problem. So the small table that I have shown below for all those three weird types, if you can just take a look at the node underscore name in your con dot log and kind of like collect the four tuples, you can identify whether it's more uh, network based load balancing that is not working correctly, whether it's host based that's not working correctly, or whether it's router ACLs that's not working correctly. For network based, I have already uh, shown you the node name. It will have at least uh, more than one specific value for your worker node if the connections are getting split to the different uh, physical hosts. Uh, I have two more slides for host base and um, ACL so that you can see how, how it looks different. So in this slide, it's UDP connections. And the beauty is for UDP connections, there are no weird notices triggered as inappropriate FIN or password switch routing because UDP doesn't have those flags that Zeek looks for to trigger those alerts. But if you're looking into the node underscore name field in your con, you can still find the split connections in your UDP, UDP traffic. So this is the real traffic. We have DNS traffic that is getting split on our host system. So if you take a look into the node name, it says the same host. So the traffic is, traffic is going to the same host for that connection, but it is somehow getting split on our worker threads. So one part, the first part of the connection, which is the DNS request, is going to the worker four on the same physical box. And the second part of the connection is going to worker eight on the uh, same physical box. So this is implying that network load balancing is working fine. You are getting the traffic that you are supposed to get on your Zeek node, but somehow on your host, the load balancing is not working correctly. So you, not, you might want to take a look into what's going on, uh, what kind of PF ring is messing up with your packets or if packets messing, with the, messing up with your packets. So this is the example of host based load balancing issue detection by looking into the node underscore name field in your connection.log. This is some kind of like, uh, and this is the second, uh, third use case for split routing. It says that uh, if you see the node name, it just says now that all the packets for that four tuple for the last 15 minutes is seen on just one host, which is Bro S3, uh, our third uh, physical box, and on the same worker, uh, worker thread. That means network load balancing is working fine, host based node load balancing is working, host based node load balancing is working fine. It's just like something is happening to your traffic, even it is before it is hitting your network based load balancing system. Like even if it even it's 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 uh, before it's hitting the Arista. So you might want to take a look into either your router ACLs or the firewall rules or something blocking it there. So this is an example that, okay, everything is working fine on the network and host side, but something might be blocking it on the router side. And you can see that it's just exactly one side of the connection um, for that mirrors a LUG server that we, not LUG, mirrors uh, Linux server that we have. And we do that usually like to um, filter down the noise we usually kind of like filter one side of the connection and that's why it says it's split connection. So yeah, so that was the example that you can uh, infer from looking at node underscore name that for these inappropriate pin and split routing, what's going on with this connection. I hope that makes sense. This is the uh, diagrammatical view for the people who like to learn more from the diagrams instead of the whole bunch of text. Exact same thing that I have discussed the three cases. So the middle one, the Arista one is the case that we have solved in our um, environment where the cause was Arista and we were getting more than one node name value and that value had different hosts in it. So like Bro West 3 and Bro West 2 were the two physical systems on which we were seeing the traffic of the same connection. Um, so that was the issue that we saw here. The case two was when you have the node name value more than greater than one, but the host name, the first part of the node name is same. And the second part, the worker thread is different. You can say that, okay, the traffic is getting split on the workers. And uh, on the third side, it's the router ACA. Like if you are just seeing one side of the connection and you just have one uh, node name value, it must be something blocking either on your router, on your firewall, or something is messing around on that side of the network. Um, that was it. And um, I know I just breezed through the slides. I only had 20 minutes. And thank you everyone for attending. And thanks to, again, awesome Zeke team. And thanks for the opportunity for, to be a presenter this time.